Well, welcome this morning. This is uh, PJ's Parlor on a President's Monday. You know, they say you can't have a membership class without, um, without coffee. So, so glad you're joining me. If you are watching this video, that means that you are interested in our membership class. You're interested in being a member at Concord Bible Church. And what that looks like is that you get all the perks. Um, and by the way, I'm at home, so my dog just came running up to me. You might hear my dog. You might hear my wife. You might hear my father-in-law. There's a lot of things you might hear. So welcome into my house. Uh, anyway, back to the perks. Lots of perks. And as a matter of fact, you'll get a card. We'll stamp your card. Uh, you can get baptized as many times as you want. You get a key to the bathroom. No, none of that. Uh, membership class at CBC is very specific. We have membership because we want our church to be an open place for anybody to walk through those doors, right? But we're congregational uh, in our polity, in our government style. So if anybody walks through the door and they were to go to a meeting where we're voting on something, if we didn't have a distinction of membership, then we would be just letting anybody have a say in the direction of the church. Uh, if you're not a member, um, then we probably aren't going to have you serving on a board, a ministry board. Uh, we're uh, probably not going to have you at a high level of uh, teaching at CBC. Because we need to get to know you. We need to know that we're simpatico on exactly what I'm here to take you through. The statement of faith and the distinctives. Once we get that understanding, then uh, another part of our membership class, which we will do live um, on the scheduled date that we'll give you, um, that's where you'll be able to share your testimony. And that's the primary thing about church membership is... Are you a member of the church proper? Are you the bride of Christ? Have you placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? And if you have, and unequivocally you know that, and there's no doubt, then <clears throat> you are a member of his church, right? But there is value in having membership in a local church body. Because every local church has a little bit of their own flavor of how they do things, uh, what they focus on. And then also, uh, because of denominational differences, there can be some big distinctions and uh, uh, doctrinal um, differences that, that are important. So that's why this video this morning is important. Number one, we want to make sure that every person that is uh, going to be joining at CBC as a member, that we're all in agreement. Jesus talked about unity. And one of the beautiful things about the Evangelical Free Church of America, which is our denomination, is that we have a humble statement of faith. It's not real complicated, but it's humble, it's orthodoxy, um, and that's what I'm here to take you through. Then we get into what makes the EFCA, the Evangelical Free Church of America, distinct from other churches. And then there are things about Concord Bible Church itself that are distinct and unique as well that we hold as part of uh, our culture. And so you're going to want to be familiar with all of those three things um, heading into uh, the class. Once you get to the class, you're going to share your testimony. And then we're going to go ahead and have a time for Q&A. We're going to share with you anything you want to know about the church. We're going to share with you what different ministries are, how you can get plugged in, um, and just any kind of questions that you might have. Uh, so with that, I'm going to give you a brief introduction into the EFCA, and then a little bit, just a little bit, about Concord Bible Church and its origins. Uh, and then we're going to dive into the statement of faith. All right? So... Get your cup of joe, load up, because here we go. So the EFCA is our denomination, the Evangelical Free Church of America. I like to refer to them as the Swedish Pilgrims. They were a group that organized around the same time as 
the pilgrims that you're familiar with from Thanksgiving, right? And those that founded America. And, uh, but they just came from Sweden. And so during that time in Western Europe, the state ran a lot of the church. And so the free church, as we refer to it, we don't, we don't often say EFCA. We just truncate it and say the free church, which is kind of funny. It's free church. Uh, the free church wanted to break away from the state church uh, in <clears throat> kind of the Nordic regions, primarily Sweden. And uh, with that, they uh, migrated over to America. But they had already been established in Sweden, and it was a group that held to an evangelical view of Scripture, um, were focused on the gospel, were focused on missions, and uh, really believed that it was uh, to the free agency of each individual um, was their spiritual accountability, their spiritual eternality, and um, that the state really had nothing to do with that, nor should they. So they broke away. They came to the states, and um, now where we're at is we're one of the fastest growing denominations uh, in the world. We have a great seminary, Trinity uh, Seminary and University in Deerfield, yeah, Deerfield, Illinois, just outside of Chicago. And uh, just phenomenal, phenomenal work comes out of there. And uh, we also have one of the strongest missions agencies uh, with Reach Global and with Touch Global. And that's one of the reasons I'm still part of the EFCA is I really appreciate their commitment to missions. The other thing that's unique about uh, the Free Church is that when you look at organizational structure, it's kind of like this pyramid. And right, it, it, it's all it's all top down kind of stuff. The free church organizational structure is different, and it takes that pyramid and it just flips it upside down. the The organizational structure is such that yes, we have a national office. Yes, we have district offices or regional offices. Those offices are there to serve the local church. Each local church is autonomous within the free church. The um, denomination doesn't tell us what to do. As long as we subscribe to the statement of faith and we can sign off on that, then we're part of the free church. The last aspect I want to share with you about our denomination that I find to be powerful is kind of a statement that they hold to uh, that, that surmises um, the culture. That's a great way to say it. The culture of the EFCA which is major on the majors and minor on the minors. So in other words, this doctrinal statement I'm going to give to you, um, you're not necessarily going to see something about how many times a month you should take communion. You're not going to see whether you, can, whether you should practice open communion or closed communion, right? They leave that to each individual church. And there's a bunch of subjects like that. Um, what they do say is if you're going to be part of the free church, you do need to sign off on this doctrinal statement. And so we're passing that to you as well. And saying the same thing, that we are in full support of this doctrinal statement and the distinctives. And we'll have a second video for that that I'll splice in here. So that is our denomination. Um, we're excited about it. We're proud. And, and, and it's just kind of fun to say you go to a free church. It makes people, it's a talking point. That's what it is. It's a talking point. Okay, so there's an introduction. Let's pause for a moment, and then we're going to go ahead and dive into the doctrinal statement. I would encourage you, go to EFCA.org and look up doctrinal statement. Just Google it. It'll take you there, and you can go through this with me step by step. Really, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give a real quick synopsis, okay? I'm not going to really teach on it. I'm going to give you a quick synopsis. But there are going to be key words that I'm going to use during this video so that during the class, you're going to need to know what those words are so I know and our elders know that, <laughs> that you've watched this video. So we're trying to streamline this whole process instead of six different classes. We're trying to go with one class, so, uh, 
But we know, we know, you're probably not going to watch this video. You better watch this video because there's going to be a test. Okay, um, I'm going to chop this right now. So go get a coffee. Go get on to EFCA.org to the doctrinal statement. And we'll come back together in just a minute. 